everyone. Uh, my name is Danish Khan. I am a non-resident scholar at National Dialogue Forum, and I teach economics and political economy at Bucknell University. Uh, COVID-19 has dramatically changed the world, um, uh, and it has wrecked the global economy, and also it's some major health crises. But um, at the same time, it has shown two broad uh, tendencies where it has made visible the differences between the rich and developed economies vis-a-vis -vis the poor and developing economies in terms of the resources and the way they can manage this health crisis. And at the same time, it has shown the differences and inequality within uh, countries, whether it's the United States or Pakistan, where uh, the privileged and elites have much better ways to uh, handle and protect themselves from this crisis, where poor and vulnerables have been left with, uh, with much more misery and pain, both in terms of pre uh, preventing uh, taking precautionary measures or uh, securing their livelihoods during these times. So uh, uh, to understand how COVID 19 is impacting people's lives, both in terms of health and economic impacts. In Gallup, Pakistan recently did a survey uh, in, and it, it shown fascinating results. And today we are here to discuss that uh, survey and their key results. And with me, I have Bilal Gilani, who is a Gallup Pakistan director and who understands this survey better than anyone else. Then uh, I have Simbul Khan here. She is a public policy expert and looks at these things from a more broader angle with the security and politics lens. And then I have Fassi Zaka, who's a communication expert and a journalist um, who understands the, the media and communication and the political landscape in Pakistan very well. So um, I'd like to thank all of them for being here with us and uh, first, I would uh, ask everyone to share their thoughts, and then Bilal can briefly explain the uh, survey to all of us. Great. Thank you so much uh, for, for giving this an opportunity to present. Um, the the Galapakistan Perception Tracker on Corona is a series of uh, almost a weekly poll that we're doing uh, in the country. This is partly in collaboration with the Gallup International, which is also doing this research um, in multiple countries. So um, this third wave uh, that we did was also done in, in another 19 countries, 17 countries across the globe. Um, the reason why we think the, a survey approach to understanding perceptions of public uh, in this particular time period is crucial is because um, across the world, um, mil billions of people are in the lockdown. So when people are in lockdown, it's difficult to really uh, understand what they are thinking and what they're going through. Um, it, the usual mechanisms through which we could understand uh, people's, people's understanding and people's uh, uh, behavior is, uh, are also missing. So for example, Parliaments across the world are not in function. Businesses and their forums are also not working. Um, media has limited access to people's homes or people's uh, public spaces. Um, so survey provides an opportunity um, and also a, a crucial insight into how the, the general public um, is bearing with it. So the, the, so the survey activity was, was planned to um, not only give voice to the people, but also to provide useful insights that can help policymakers uh, understand the, the priorities that are required uh, from the public's perspective, but also to understand to what extent the, the, the messaging campaigns and the public policy initiatives that are, are already in place, to what extent are they working, what extent uh, people are complying with it, and um, and to what extent people's views on them uh, have changed over time. Um, the survey was uh, in this time period. The survey cannot have been face to face because we would uh, 
movement of interviewers is difficult and we want to ensure safety uh, of our uh, interviewers as well as respondents. So uh, phone approach was used for this survey. So we did about a thousand interviews across uh, the country using telephone interviews, uh, which is called as the CATI approach. Um, it's a fairly standard approach across the world. So in, in order to select the respondents, we use the random digit dialing approach. Uh, again, fairly standard across the world. Um, the survey is about 10 minutes long. Um, the respondents uh, hail from all um, classes of the society. Um, because mobile phone was the main frame used, um, the, the response rates differ. Uh, and in the end, we weighted the data to come up with a national picture. I, I, the, I, I go through, um, there are few facts and findings that are um, painting a rather um, a positive picture of the, the entire Corona campaign, uh, people's perception of them and how things are moving ahead. And then there are a few points that I personally thought uh, they, they, they provided a, a more bleaker picture of how things have been. Uh, in terms of the, the, the more um, positive approaches and the positive understanding that emerges is that most people in the country, around two thirds are complying with the regulations that uh, the government has put in place. So, so a lot of people are, um, they are genuinely, they genuinely feel that Corona is a threat to them and to their family personally. Um, the number has been rising slowly over the over the weeks. Uh, um, the The second part that I thought was interesting was people are also doing uh, practical measures. So in March, when we did the survey, about uh, almost a half of the population said that they were not doing anything, even though they they, they felt threatened by Corona, they were not doing much. Uh, then that number has fallen down to only 13% in the wave three. Uh, majorities report using uh, masks, using uh, hand sanitizers, doing hand washing more frequently. Um, so, uh, so in in that sense, the the, the campaign is able to um, create that sort of awareness, both psychologically as well as pushing people to do things. Uh, it's only two third. Uh, one third is also a very large number in terms of people who are not still complying or not doing enough. Uh, and these could, this is a, a potential area to work on. Um, another aspect that I thought was positive was um, almost two thirds are in support of the government's locked uh, Friday prayer uh, banning. In a country where uh, people's emotions are with religion and um, and it has it has been uh, it's been been a very difficult journey to to uh, control religious feelings of that this sort. I thought the two third was a very large number, and this is before the government uh, essentially decided to let the Tarabi prayers and other prayers open up, uh, citing, for example. Uh, recently, President Alvi cited that a very large majority were in, were asking for it. Uh, I thought the my understanding of the of the public's perception and the results is that two thirds were in favor of continuing with the with the Friday prayer plan, and Taravi could have also had similar numbers uh, uh, if if the government had banned it, there would have been similar numbers supporting it. Um, so it, it it was perhaps a misreading of the public perception. Um, uh, in terms of the the, the rather bleaker picture, I, I think what really stands out is the economic misery coming out of this. Um, and I think that's one point that the power circles and the elite circles have uh, given less uh, importance to. So in the in the findings of the survey. Uh, almost two third or more, um, nearly 80% are saying that they have lost a very sizable portion of their income. Uh, that translates to about 25 million households who are saying that they have lost a very sizable income. About 20 million, if, if forecasted, is, are saying that they have lost uh, their un they have lost their employment altogether. Um, in terms of the international comparison, in the 17 countries that the poll was done, Pakistan was at the top in terms of the, this economic misery that comes out of uh, Corona. 
so it is it is an unfortunate um uh an unfortunate compromise between health and economics and uh, i i think the everyone in across the world are battling with this uh, this dilemma uh, but my own person understanding is that the government is doing a lot but it is not doing enough uh, to to really um address this issue in a in a more systematic way um in terms of the the the, the last thing that i will stop on is the is the communication campaign so we tested in specific the the ringtone campaign which is a very interesting and novel way uh, uh that the communication was being done in pakistan um so almost uh, 75% have listened to um listen to this to, to the ringtone in one or the other way about 50% say they have listened to it completely um but the 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 a quarter of population that have not listened to the ringtone um that points to potential areas or potential segments of society that need to be further targeted to other means um and these are the more uh, left out uh, in terms of com- communication as well as government assistance in any way so uh we see a slightly larger number in kpk uh, rural areas in balochistan in general uh people above the age of 50 uh women in general um who are essentially um less users of mobile phone and therefore left out of the campaign so so i i i uh, i thought that um systematic evaluation and systematic measurement of the government's campaign uh is a crucial instrument that is less uh, be, less often being used in pakistan currently and is something that that could potentially uh, this this survey result and findings can potentially create a, an audience for that sort of work to happen more to happen more um with this i i would conclude my talk.